there's just one ego and that there's really just one projection. So, in your mind, when you believe in the ego, you have a lot of categories, compartments, judgments, including, you know, with bodies, tall, short, fat, skinny, fast, slow, um, beautiful, ugly, uh, and all of the nuances that we talk about, male, female, masculine, feminine, you know, and even to spiritual, spiritualities and religions, the yin and the yang, you know, how they have the yin and the yang sign coming together as one. But there is no duality that's reality. Everything that involves duality is part of the projection. It's, it's projecting the split mind and it's projecting it into a world, a cosmos, where there seems to be trillions and trillions of fragments that don't have any existence in and of themselves and really have no relation to one another either. It's just a, it's a big projection of images that were made to veil the face of Christ, so to speak, and, and to veil <coughs> love and God. And all this stuff about meaning, relationships, morality, and all the guilt associated with, you know, the do's and the don'ts and the shoulds and the shouldn'ts and everything, is all part of this projection. And that's why the first lesson of A Course in Miracles says, nothing I see means anything. You know, I've had people say, he's just warming us up, right? He's, he's going to tell us what it all means. No, he's not. He's never going to tell you that it means anything. He never changes his, his teaching. He starts off lesson one with, nothing I see means anything. And he doesn't put a 1A or a 1B in there. Except, you know, a beautiful man or a beautiful woman, or except a, a <coughs> daisy or a tulip. You know. it, there's no qualifications. Nothing I see means anything. So we have a perceptual hallucination that's going on, and all of this guilt comes around from making false associations as if they're real, believing in them, and then buying all these nuances and categories, and then and hanging on to that as if these are good, these are bad, these are the shoulds, these are the shouldn'ts. If you do these things, you'll get back to heaven, but if you do these things, you're going to burn in hell. You know, the ego has invented this whole system to perpetuate guilt. And to God, there, are, there really are no good behaviors and bad behaviors. Why? Because God didn't create the cosmos. God doesn't even know about the cosmos. It's the Holy Spirit that's working with the, the split mind to help it release the cosmos and come back to nirvana or heaven. But how, why would God punish people for behaviors that he doesn't even know about? You know, this is, we're, we're getting much, much deeper into things. Quantum physics is saying that it looks solid, you know, the walls look solid, the floor looks solid, the, the bodies look solid, but really it's just like a projection of, of energy and that's moving at a slower rate, of dense energy, and it's part of a mirage, it's maya, it's illusion, it doesn't have any meaning whatsoever, but it just looks like it, like it's there, but it's not. And, and so, once you start to take this thing about the balls, the ball and the, the, the floor, the concrete never touching, you can start to realize that nobody touches nobody, and, and he says to her in there, it never touched you. And she goes, right, that hurt. <laughs> she just interpreted the hurt as if a ball was hitting her stomach, but that was just a wrong-minded perception. Again, nothing's really happening in form. All of the discomforts and the hurts are coming from the mind's concepts and ideas. All the pains, there's no such thing really as physical pain, it's just a, a mental projection as if the body feels. We were talking about that this morning, like, you know, I, when I don't follow a prompt or something, I feel a, a hurt in my body. Or, uh, when I don't follow a prompt, I have sexual feelings. And, but that's also, those feelings are part of the projection too. So everything is happening in the mind, and that's the only place that it's going to get resolved. So, this has enormous implications. So, if you're watching a scene, any scene, and you start to have jealousy feelings come up, 
Where are those jealousy feelings? They, they have to be in the mind of the perceiver. Or if you have a thought like, oh, I'd like to take and hold so-and-so's hand, but I, I don't know. So-and-so's in the room over there, and so-and-so's in the room, and I don't know what they'll think. They may think poorly of me. They may think, I'm, I'm a slut, or I'm loose if I start holding people's hands or something that aren't a partner of mine. But, but being concerned about what other people think, where are those other people with those thoughts? You know, they're still in the mind of the perceiver. Everything that you perceive, that you feel guilty about, hesitant about, that you feel like, I better be careful about that, those are all just thoughts in the mind. We'll call it the mind, because there aren't really even private minds. That's just part of the trick. So, if, if jealousy comes up, you know, psychotherapists, uh, counselors, or whatever may try to address the problem on the level of form, as if there's actually people. Like, oh, I, feel, I felt really jealous when I, when I found so-and-so doing this with so-and-so. And, and a true <coughs> advanced psychotherapist, a spiritual psychotherapist, would just say, oh good, you've got some jealousy issues to work on there. Somebody who's not into metaphysics and doesn't understand how this whole thing is working, could say, yeah, let's get them in here and let's uh, tell them how you feel. And uh, maybe you might even say, well, you have a good reason to be jealous, because look what they did. You know, as if something outside of you actually happened, and as if jealousy is an appropriate response to what was perceived happening. You see the difference between seeing as just an emotion that's coming up in your mind for healing and release, and it's not about what anybody did, it's what your meaning or interpretation was of what they did. And that interpretation is always wrong, because it's always wrong-minded. God is not a jealous God, and I'll tell you one thing, Jesus is not jealous either. He's, he doesn't have any jealousy. The Christ isn't jealous. And jealousy is clearly an emotion that comes from a comparison that's going on. You know, the comparison is, hey, I'm getting the short end of the stick. I want what they are getting, or I want to have that over there, and I don't have it. And clearly it's just a misperception. So, you can see how different your life will be as you begin to understand these deep metaphysics. Instead of trying to make all these rules, we'll call them external rules, moralistic rules to try to live by that regulate behavior, you'll start to realize, well the problem's mental. The problem is not behavioral at all. It's <coughs> never behavioral. And as long as you're perceiving something and you have a reaction coming up, that's that reaction is something to be forgiven. You know, you've got to get at the thoughts and the beliefs underneath that anger, that jealousy, <coughs> that envy. You know, all those emotions that that are seen to be as just regular, normal humor, human emotions, they're all ego emotions. There's no envy in God. There's no jealousy in God. There's no anger in God. So that's what we're looking at. And that, that little snippet from quantum physics kind of gives you an idea that it's just a perceptual world. And then when you try to justify an upsetting emotion by saying, well, here's the fact. What I saw and what actually happened was so-and-so did such-and-such -such with so-and-so, and I saw it with my own two eyes. <laughs> So don't even think of trying to get off this hook, because I saw it. I witnessed it with my own eyes. In fact, I had my video camera running in my pen, and so I captured it in case you think you can say, I didn't do it. I will play you the recording from this secret pen that I got. No, you, what you perceive through the five senses is not a fact. There are no facts 
perceived with the five senses. Nothing is a fact in perception. Why? Because God didn't create it. God is a fact. Christ, the Spirit, is a fact. And that's why Jesus says in the Course, no one can be angry at a fact. When I was working with the students in the 1990s, they hated that. What is he talking about? No one can be angry at a fact. Give us an example of a fact. I said, God is a fact. Christ is a fact. And no one can be angry at God or Christ. Because if you knew God or Christ, you would realize it's just pure love. And there's no anger there. Anger always arises from a misperception. Without fail, anger comes from a misperception. Without fail, jealousy comes from misperception. Envy comes from misperception. There's never a time when the Holy Spirit would say, yeah, you should feel envious here. It's, yeah, yeah, I, I have to agree with you. <laughs> you know. I, I wish I had one of those too, you know. Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is not ever, or the jealousy, you know, like, mm, mm, mm. Yep, I saw that too. Uh, report back to God. There, you know, God won't punish them, but we'll just, we'll make it really nasty for them, uh, for what they did to you, you know. It's just, it just doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit doesn't perceive moralistically, you know, it's not, the Holy Spirit is not a moral entity. The Holy Spirit doesn't perceive good behaviors and bad behaviors. Which also means, we were talking about rituals and spirituality, doing all these kind of rituals and, and specific prayers to try to get specific things. You know, it starts to become much ado about nothing when you start to realize how this really works. You know, to keep praying and praying and praying for an outcome, you know, to be wealthy or to have a beautiful spouse or, or to have children or whatever, you know, those prayers for specifics at some point of your spiritual evolution start to be like, what is that even about? You know, you can start to go up the ladder and start to pray for states of mind, you know. Help me experience integrity, help me experience honesty, help me experience patience and tolerance. You know, those are still on the ladder because there's no patience in heaven. You don't have to be patient in, it, patient in eternity because there's no impatience, there's no there's no time, and patience has no meaning in heaven, but you can actually pray for certain qualities, and, and that's really your prayer is, help me be more right-minded. When you're right-minded, you're, you're very patient when you're in alignment. Okay.